Today on what it's like, 1959 Chevy Impala four-door hardtop. This car is super cool. Even though it's four doors, it's not a sedan, it's a hardtop. And we're gonna talk about the differences in this video. What makes it a hardtop, what makes it a sedan. Sedans aren't really that cool. Hard tops are totally cool. All right, let's get into the brief history of the uh, Chevy Impala. But before we dive deep into Impala history, Huge thank you to Street Machinery and Classic Cars in Elucid, Ohio for giving me this opportunity to do an in-depth look at this stunning 59 Impala four-door hardtop. They specialize in late 50s, early 60s Chevys, but they have awesome cars in their inventory outside of those parameters. Link in the description. All right, the Chevy Impala story starts in 1958, just one year prior to 1959. To understand the importance of the Impala model, you have to look back at the other models Chevy offered before 1958, often referred to as the Tri-5 era, 55, 56, 57. Chevy lineup consisted of, you had the Chevy 150, the 210, the Bel Air, the Del Rey. So I made a collage of all the different models that they offered in the Tri-5 era, 55, 56, 57. You could get the 150, the 210, Del Rey, Bel Air, just to simplify things. But if you look closely, it's all the same vehicle underneath the trim. The trim is the only thing that sets these cars apart from one another and some various options and other things. I mean, like the Bel Air, you could get in a hard top or a convertible. You couldn't get a convertible in the 210. It was a post car only. 150 the same way. Not to say that the Bel Air wasn't nice, it's just Chevy wanted a halo car. But wait, didn't they have the Corvette? They did, but they wanted something more. This is a side note, while researching this car, I had a mind-blowing realization that I didn't realize until just now, for some reason, a lot of car companies, not all of them, in the mid to late 50s, take Ford and Chevy, for example, they only made two cars. They made, let, let's, let's go with 1955, for example. Ford made the Thunderbird and the Crown Vic. They also made a wagon and a truck, but for simplicity, let's just look at the two cars. And Chevy made the Bel Air and the Corvette. The point I'm trying to get to is they only made two cars, but say they made eight or nine versions or trim levels of that car. Chevy coming back to 1958 with their Impala was a, going to be the car to break that sort of mold. Chevy really didn't offer any other cars up until, until the 1960s with the introduction of the Corvair line, but that's just what it was. It was a line of cars, and I don't understand why I didn't realize that. Like, Edsel was one of my favorite car brands. I was always fascinated with the 1958 Edsel, but even them, they had two wheelbases and then just built, you know, 11 different versions of the car on those two chassis. And that's why they came out with a new car every year because they only made one new car every year and then just made different trim levels of the same car. It's crazy, but it, it just never clicked before. Not the case with every single automaker from that era, but Ford and Chevy, it seems to be. Well, anyway, getting back to the uh, Impala story, 1958 was the first year for Chevy to use the Impala name on a production car. Impala was the top of the line trim. Previous was the Chevy Bel Air. Bel Air was marketed for the mid-price field and was discontinued at the end of 1958. So just take a gander at the 1959 offerings for Chevy. To hammer my point home, look at the cars. Look at how similar they look because they're all the same car. The only difference is, is the trim level and the packaging that you could get with it. I did notice the El Camino is missing from this but this is their car line. So I guess you can't really say that this is all of their offerings because they did offer the El Camino in 1959, which isn't on this list. Neither are the trucks on here. So this is all their car offerings. The styling at the time was very controversial because instead of the fins pointing upward, they protruded outward. And a lot of people thought that it was too much too soon. But despite the criticism, these vehicles sold really well. Well, getting underneath the hood of this thing, the, the lever is right over here. You just pull it up and it's all one motion. You just reach up underneath here and there is a lever right here. You pull that back, pull up on it. There's a second catch. You just open it. 
This one's got the 283, which was the base V8. It was called the 283 Turbo Fire V8. It produced 185 horsepower. You could also get, as standard, the 235 Blue Flame inline straight six. Optional engines you could get, you could get a 283 V8 with 290 horsepower. You could also get a 348 W series turbo thrust v8 and it produced up to 335 horsepower okay so let's talk transmissions you could get a three speed close ratio manual you could get a three speed with overdrive manual four speed manual turbo glide or you could get the two speed power glide automatic this is a power steering car and this is very interesting setup i've never seen anything like this so this is the generator and it's belt driven, but there's a shaft that runs outside of the generator into the power steering pump. So there's the steering box down there. Because the door comes so far back underneath the windshield, it's so much easier getting in and out of these cars. Despite the door not being very large, you know, it's so easy getting in and out because there's nothing for you to hit your foot off of. Could you imagine if it was designed a different way, if the door ended here, then the rest of everything else would have to be pushed back. It would be harder to get in and out. So just take a look at that door. It's very unusual looking because you got the, uh, you got the vent window up there that's connected to the door and the just the overall shape of it's very unique. You have uh, your window, your window crank here. And then this is for the vent window. You crank it to open it. I just love that. It's such a quality feature whenever you have to crank the window open instead of pulling it open it just feels so much better getting out of this is very unique it doesn't have a normal door handle like we've been uh, showcasing in any vehicle you pull up on it and that's how you get out so just check that out so you pull up on it like that and that's how you get out but just check out how all that works Got the big wrap around windshield in the front. We're gonna give her a door close here. Just take a gander at that steering wheel. Look at how gorgeous it looks. Very thin. That's why I like classic cars. It's a thin steering wheel. It's easy to hold on to, very easy to drive. Turn signals are here. Pretty standard. And then you got your uh, column shifter here with. Um, Here's your drive modes. You have uh, park, you have reverse, neutral, drive, and low. So you can see it there. Inside this gauge, you actually have two. You have your generator and you have your oil. Over here, you have your temperature gauge. Over here in the center, over here in the center, you got your speedo and your odometer. Over here, you have your fuel gauge. Over here's your clock. And then coming down here, you have your lights, which you just pull them out. Pretty standard stuff. Your wipers, you just turn the knob to the position that you want them to be in. Over here, you have your, your fan. You have your defrost, heat and air this um, ignition switch over here you have your radio controls um, both of these turn the back one is for the toner and the front the top one is for the volume then you have your radio you have your pre-selector buttons and then you have your selector and your tuner here this is what your sun visors look like this one has a very rare accessory. This one has a dimming mirror. It will, it will dim with the flick of a switch. This is 1959.
coming back down here underneath the radio you have your ashtray and cigarette lighter moving over to the glove box box and when you open it I'm just always amazed at how big these glove boxes and these cars are because you know glove box nowadays is pretty small but the ones in these cars are pretty pretty big probably fit an iPad Pro in there if you wanted to these seats have uh, plastic material protective material over top of them to protect the seats and just take a look at that this is a four-door hardtop there's no post so this is the cool four-door because it doesn't have a post it has that whole hardtop convertible kind of feel to it you have your dome light right there at the very top there's actually one on both sides so that's a really nice feature to have check out this rear windshield it wraps clear around this thing has awesome visibility there isn't hardly any posts or pillars like it's got the wraparound windshield in the front and the back so here's what the key looks like to the 1959 Chevrolet Impala there's two keys on this key ring but they're they're both the same um, so this key works for the doors as well as the trunk glove box and ignition switch it's all the same key which is really cool really nice to have just notice how it's all sculpted out like this is beautiful and like I was never really a fan of this body style just to be frank but um it, it looks a whole lot better in person than it does in pictures it's all very detail oriented as far as like how, how much like curve it is this almost looks like a wave like the top of a, a wave coming off there and then it slopes down inside here it's very unique we're gonna get into the trunk now and show you what that's like so you take the same key like we talked about there's only one key that does everything with this car which is a huge plus because then you don't have to worry about losing keys I mean you could still lose keys but you know oh I lost the, the key to the glove box it's all the same key so that's huge amount of trunk space this is a full-size spare here you have a bumper jack down in there it's absolutely massive trunk you know you get theater just gonna bring you around the side and show you how far those body lines go into the actual body how much it's actually sculpted in there it's crazy it's also worth mentioning we're showing just check out how this comes across it builds from the middle here of the fourth door like we said but it comes all the way out look at how much how far that comes out already and it just keeps building and building and building until it's all the way out this one's got fender skirts check out how this trim piece comes all the way to a point at the front and the fins are in the back so that's really cool how that trim comes up there and this line comes out the front here it's got bumper guards which were an accessory the indicators are right here Just check out this roof line real quick. See how it overhangs the back windshield. The roof line's a lot like wheels on a car. It definitely makes the appearance of the car. All right, so we're at the end of the video where I tell you what it's like. This is an awesome car. Sometimes they refer to these as uh, sports sedan instead of a four-door hardtop but it could be considered both and what makes it a four-door hardtop is it doesn't have a center post or frames around the doors 
whereas a regular sedan would have a center post and frames around the doors, and that's what makes it so cool. Just check out how it all opens up here. Another thing I forgot to mention in the video, this car has a flat top. Chevy offered different roof designs during this era. They offered bubble tops, flat tops. The coupe had a different top. I think there was four different tops. We're gonna to talk about that in a different video coming up soon. I just wanna recap on some of this car's key features. Like check out the wraparound windshield, check out the wraparound front windshield, and the supports to those are so minimal that you could see literally there is no blind spots in this car, which is amazing for how big it is. You could fit six people comfortably in this car. There's one key for everything, which is awesome. If you dig what I do, I do, we do all kinds of crazy cars on this channel, not the stuff that usually gets reviewed. So if you're into that, if you're into like Lost Forgotten Classics, not saying 59 Impala is a Lost Forgotten Classic, but it's a car that a lot of people don't do an in-depth dive on. Give us a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Share this with as many people as you know. We're going to have some really cool stuff coming up. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, toodaloo!